Good morning and welcome to worship for Sunday, March 7th. Today's scripture text contains three well-known and beloved stories. The story of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. I'm reasonably certain that you've heard sermons on each of these stories individually, but today I'm going to combine the three in a certain way and look at it from the perspective of the broader context. I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we begin with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymn book to hymn number 335, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross, hymn number 335. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy.
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray. Us pray. Rejoicing Father, you celebrate when one of your lost children is found because no one is worthless to you. We stand humbled and in awe that you would count us among your most prized possessions. Give us eyes to see the priceless value of every living soul for the sake of the one who became human, for the sake of our souls. Jesus Christ, our seeker. Amen. Our scripture readings for today are from Psalm 119 and Luke chapter 15. Psalm 119, verses 167 to 176. My soul keeps your decrees. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and decrees, for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips will pour forth praise because you teach me your statutes. My tongue will sing of your promise for all your commandments are right. Let your hand be ready to help me for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let me live that I may praise you and let your ordinances help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek out your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Our gospel reading for today is Luke chapter 15. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. 
I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. And then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found." And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, You are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to turn in your hymn book to hymn number 502, The King of Love My Shepherd Is, and we will sing the first three verses. Hymn number 502. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It's an exciting time in our area right now as I learn how many of you are receiving your vaccinations against the COVID-19 virus. I want to affirm that and say to you clearly, do not feel guilty. 
Remember, the highest death rate is among the oldest people. Those of you who are over the age of 65 need this vaccine because we don't want to lose you. But there are also lots and lots of much younger people who haven't received their vaccination yet, who are just as anxious for a return to normal, and who would love to have the reassurance that, at a minimum, they have an appointment to get their vaccination, even if it's two months in the future. For those of us who aren't old enough or don't fall into the other categories that qualify for vaccination, it's a frustrating time. We feel forgotten, overlooked, insignificant. Like what we do or who we are doesn't matter. So I ask you to try to recognize these feelings and recognize that we are living in a two-tiered world right now with those who have been vaccinated and those who have not. In our scripture lesson for today, Jesus is in front of a two-tiered crowd. He's spending lots of time with outcasts, the downtrodden, with, as Luke labels them, tax collectors and sinners. But the religious elite are there and they are watching from the sidelines. We're not going to dwell on the religious elite today. Instead, our focus will be on those marginalized people, the people that are on the edges. The outcasts are regular people that have to perform physical labor to make a living. And they're being judged harshly for their work, in part because it means that they cannot spend time in religious study and worship, which is considered a higher calling. The tax collectors and sinners do have a sense of self-worth. They recognize that what they are doing is important. The powers and authorities don't acknowledge that to them. But today, today, someone is recognizing their value. Someone is paying attention to them. Jesus is speaking directly to them. And by doing so, Jesus is telling them that they are important too, that they matter, that they are not outcasts, downtrodden, marginalized in God's eyes. The crowds come to Jesus because he is telling them that God loves them. They are hungry for those crumbs of hope and affirmation. And to make absolutely certain that they understand, Jesus conveys the message of the love of God using examples from their world, the lost sheep and the lost coin. Think of it this way. Does it make any sense for the shepherd to leave behind 99 sheep to seek out one lost one? Absolutely not. From a business standpoint, one might consider a 1% loss the cost of doing business, and just write it off. But from the shepherd's point of view, that one sheep is worth the search. Every sheep has value and is worth the time and the effort it takes to find them. Each is of worth in the eyes of the shepherd. The same is true of the coin. We recognize that in the story of the sheep, it's likely the sheep's fault that it got lost, but not so with the coin. The coin is an inanimate object, and it made no choice in the matter. As in the previous story, the woman could have chosen to overlook her loss. After all, she does still have nine coins. But this coin has worth in her eyes, and she values it enough to put in the extra effort to find it. People matter to God. God will spend hours with the acknowledged risk of losing 99 sheep to find the one that is lost. God will light a lamp and expend energy and resources to find the lost coin. God is looking for everyone and is using energy and resources to do so. God will not stop until everyone is found. Now, all three of today's parables are well known to most of us. The next one that we are about to come upon has been long been labeled the story of the prodigal son. 
And that label is an acknowledgement that the son makes clear choices about leaving his home and family. But an argument can be made that it should be labeled instead the story of the loving father. Doing so makes it consistent with the lessons of the previous parables. Here's what I mean. In the story of the lost sheep and the lost coin, the two human characters do everything in their power to find the lost. They care enough to look, to seek, to search. And while the loving father does not leave his property to find the wayward son, he does keep watch. And when the son journeys toward home, the scripture says, while he was still far off, his father saw him. That loving father is spending his time every hour, every day, looking for the wayward son. And when he sees him, he runs to greet him and accompany him home. When the lost is found, there is joy. In each case, there is a feast of celebration that the lost has been found. The crowds of people that Jesus spends time with are being told that not only are they being sought, when they are found, there will be a party. They don't need to fear the future. They don't need to be concerned that there will be punishment upon their return. Rather, they can look forward to being received with joy. Jesus' message of God's love and care is specifically for them. They are the lost, and their Father God is seeking them. And Jesus' audience has never been part of the in crowd ever before, always lost and with little to no hope that anyone is looking for them. But best of all, when they are found, there will be a party. No retribution, no need for massive sacrifices at the temple to atone for misdeeds. No, simply joy. That's the good news message that consistently draws enormous crowds to listen to Jesus. And enormous crowds in popularity make people with power, whether it's political power or religious power, uneasy. Just as there was good news for the crowds around Jesus, there is good news gospel for us in the scripture text for today. We too are being told that not only are we being sought, when we are found, there will be a party. We don't need to fear the future. We don't need to be concerned that there will be punishment upon our return. Rather, we can, be, we can look forward to being received with joy. Jesus' message of God's love and care is for us. We are the lost, and our Father God is seeking us. We are not outcasts. We are not being overlooked. No. The shepherd, the woman, the loving Father, all those images of God represent the one who is looking for us and preparing a great big party for us when we are found. Look forward to the future with hope, my friends. Look forward to the future. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymn book to hymn number 502. We will sing the last three verses, verses 4, 5, and 6. Hymn number 502.
worship continues with the confession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's spend a little time in prayer. Beloved friends, in this season of repentance and healing, we accept God's invitation to be ever mindful of the needs of others, offering our prayers on behalf of God's community in the church and the world. Rescue the church, O God, from divisions and schisms. Help us to find our unity and joy in your grace and good news. We pray today for St. Columkills in Goodhue and St. Ansgar's in Cannon Falls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Find and strengthen those who protect creation, O God. Work in us and through us to bring healing and wholeness to all that you have made. We give thanks for the encouragement that longer days and melting snow brings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help the leaders of countries, O God, to seek out the lost and oppressed. Set our minds on justice and peace that the world may better reflect your kingdom and rule. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rescue the lost, O God. No matter how or why they may be lost, please bring them into healthy and supportive communities and surround them with love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Find and strengthen those who heal, O God. Work in and through them to share your comfort and healing. We pray for Scott Sorensen, Linda Thompson, Max Tilderquist, Jerry McRae, Eileen Anderson, Paul Mickelson, Gloria Skoog, Bob Kraus, Pauline Carlson, Einar Norman, and Merle Pearson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, O God, to search for those around us in any need. Open our eyes to your presence in the people around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and keep Kevin Eckblad, Dan Hedin, Teresa Josephson, Brian Mandelkow, Rita Pearson, Dwayne Thompson, Kathy Peterson, Marilyn Hansen, and Linda Thompson, who celebrate birthdays this week. Be with them in their going out and their coming in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You bring your flock home, O God. Thank you for our heavenly home and for those who have gone before us on the way to it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fill us with your strength to resist the seductions of our foolish desires and the tempter's vain delights, that we may walk in obedience and righteousness, rejoicing in you with an upright heart. Amen. And our generosity moment for today. Recently, I made some class changes in the classrooms in the Lutheran Center. The youth room had been cleared out last fall so that the Just for Kicks dance troupe from Cannon Falls could use it for their dance classes. But then it was time to start some confirmation classes, so where to meet? I decided to start using classroom number three, which is a split classroom, and I went to River City Carpet and asked if they had a carpet remnant that I could get for cheap. River City had a lovely piece of carpet, and it looks wonderful in there. We move the couches in, and it creates a very comfortable atmosphere. In fact, when the confirmation students saw the end result, they just kind of went, ah, there was this sigh of pleasure. But I want to acknowledge that River City gave us the carpet with a bound edge for free. That's generosity, folks, and we give thanks for their goodness to us. I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds now for Holy Communion.
You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. I invite you to pray with me the prayer our Lord taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you share the, the bread and the wine at home, remember that the bread is the body of Christ given for you, and the wine or the grape juice is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, be with you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymn book to hymn number 883, All People That on Earth Do Dwell, hymn number 883.
A couple of announcements before we complete our worship for today. First of all, thank you to everyone who signed up for the community dinner. We um, are excited to be serving on Wednesday and we've got lots of help lined up and we look forward to seeing you all. There will be um, Lenten worship after the community dinner at seven o'clock here in the um, sanctuary. So um, don't, don't be confused about, well, we've got the community dinner, we're not gonna do Lenten worship. Yes, we are going to do Lenten worship. And our theme for this coming Wednesday's Lenten worship are the four, the two maids and the two wives of um, Jacob. Um, or you could say the four wives of Jacob. And they are Leah, Rachel, Bilhah, and Zilpah. And so the, we'll be examining that story on Wednesday evening. The other piece of information that I have is that I, we received um, notification yesterday, Thursday, that um, Goodhue County Health and Human Services is going to begin to vaccinate adults ages 65 and above starting next Monday. And how it's going to work is you, will, you can register online or by phone to receive um, a COVID vaccine in Goodhue County each Monday at 8.30 in the morning, an online link and a phone line will go live, and it will be on a first come, first serve basis. If you can't register for whatever reason for one week, come back the following week to register for, register for another opportunity. What's going to happen is that you register on Mondays until the, until the slots are filled. The vaccinations will be held on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And then the next week, it starts over again. Good news, good news for everybody that more and more vaccine is becoming available. Let us complete our worship with the blessing and dismissal. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.